there, welcome to Whole30 Day 18. I'm Elizabeth Hines and do not be intimidated by all the stuff that's going on here. It just happens to be that what I'm cooking tonight, I'm going to use some extra equipment. But if you don't have all this equipment, don't worry about it. It's a simple meal. Tonight we're making, and I apologize for my voice, I'm getting over my cold. I haven't actually taken any medicine today, so that feels awesome. Um, but I still sound like I could participate in an all-male choir, so um, I apologize for the frogginess. So tonight we're making one of the most popular recipes from my website. It is the ground beef stroganoff, and it's popular for a reason. It tastes really good, and it's really simple, and it uses basic ingredients, basic paleo pantry ingredients, and um, it's pretty quick to put together. And I'm going to show you that even if you are like me and you are perpetually forgetting to get your meat out of the freezer, it will still come together pretty quickly. So I have just added a pound of grass-fed ground beef to my stainless steel skillet. It's a non-coated skillet with high sides and I have my heat on about medium-high and I'm going to put the lid on it which is going to help it start to brown more quickly since I have been negligent. and. Um, just got it out of the freezer this morning. Um, before I go any further, I have to say my husband was right. So I guess um, our men like to know that they're right, and I don't even remember what he was right about. <clears throat> but he said something today, and I said, You're right. And I think it made his day. So I felt like I should tell everybody who's watching that. My husband was right today, and um, I'm very proud of him. So, continuing on with our meal, we're making the ground beef stroganoff. I've made this actually with uh, like a flank steak or a skirt steak. I, I can't remember exactly what I used. A nicer cut of meat, and frankly, I just didn't like it as well. Uh, the oops, there's a little piece of skin on there. This works great with ground beef. It is really affordable. If you're like me, you stock up on the grass-fed ground beef when it's on sale, and so I just almost always have a package of it in the freezer. I buy mushrooms every week. I make sure I have onions in my pantry. So this is a meal that I can almost always put together with things that I have on hand. So all I'm going to do here, my process is I want this meat to brown, and I'm going to add my onions and my mushrooms. I want them to brown as well. I'm going to add a thickener, and I'm going to add some liquid ingredients to make a sauce, and then we're going to have our beef stroganoff. And to go with the stroganoff, we're going to have mashed cauliflower, which we just posted my mashed cauliflower recipe uh, video. The recipe's been on the website for a while, but we just posted the video of it um, a week ago or so, and that is the best recipe and it has some dairy in it and it is really really good but because we're whole 30 ing right now I'm not going to use the dairy but I am going to include my special trick for making the cauliflower actually taste like mashed potatoes and this is um, a really unique idea but we're going to actually add a potato so we're going to cook a whole head of cauliflower. I'm going to add some salt and pepper just as I go. So this is an eighth of a teaspoon measure right here. So just a little bit of salt and I'll sprinkle in some pepper and I'll just kind of add, add a little bit more every time I add something else to the skillet. Um, so there we go. So we're having the mashed cauliflower tonight and the potato will help it to um, just have a really nice texture. You know, cauliflower is very watery, so it can have a watery texture, which is really what the butter and the cream cheese bring to the table when I make it in a dairy way, which there's not a lot of dairy. It's like a tablespoon of a tablespoon or two of butter, a tablespoon or two of cream cheese. Um, but they're adding a creaminess, a silkiness, a richness, and the potato will actually add some of that same creaminess. And I will add ghee instead of butter. Ghee is allowed on the Whole30 
dirty. Oh, I'll wash these. There's a little piece of dirt. This is a really dirty package of mushrooms. Almost always I can find a package of cremini mushrooms on clearance at my local Kroger, which is interesting. I'm, maybe they're not very popular um, here. I don't know, but I buy them every week and they're almost always on sale. So, and these were, these were great. They were just dirty. They weren't wilty or anything. Um, and the other thing we're going to have is green beans and I had a real bumper crop of green beans in my garden earlier this summer so many that we were eating them every day and we still could not eat all that um, that I was picking and so I would clean them and uh, snip the stem ends off and blanch them so just put them in boiling water for about five minutes and then shock them in some ice water and then freeze them and so of course just like I do with my meat I forgot to get my green beans out ahead of time. I'm such a planner, y'all. I really, really am. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blame this cold, but I even write down, you know, okay, Wednesday's dinner is beef stroganoff and mashed cauliflower and green beans. And so on Monday, I write, get the ground beef and get the green beans out of the freezer. And I just didn't do it this week, so I just forgot. So typically, when I'm making something like this, I will add, I'll get my meat all browned and then I'll add my vegetables. But when I made this, I guess one of the first times, I was trying to be fast. I thought, what if I just go ahead and add the mushrooms and the onions? Is it really gonna mess anything up? And the answer was no. And it cooked really quickly, tasted great, no problem. So that's just what I do now all the time. So while that's going, I'm going to get my cauliflower going, and you know how to do this because I just did another video, but um, I'm going to show you just because I'm doing it tonight. So I've already washed all my veggies, and oh, I need to peel that. Sometimes I will not peel uh, my potatoes, and I'll just use the skin, um, but because I'm doing cauliflower, it'll be really really smooth and I don't just want this one like a couple little stray bits of potato peeling I think that would seem kind of weird so I'm going to peel it this is a Yukon Gold it's kind of a medium sized one and sometimes I can buy a whole bag of these really inexpensively but they were kind of expensive today I don't I don't understand why potatoes are sometimes expensive um, but they were so I just picked the one that I wanted out of the bin I didn't have a need for any others um, coming up soon. So just peel it. I had washed it already. And I'm going to cut it roughly into chunks. It's a little denser. I feel like it will take a little bit longer to cook than my cauliflower. So, um, so I'll cut it in a little bit smaller pieces. Now this cauliflower, I have washed it. But you see it has a, it has a bad spot right there. I just bought it a few days ago. I'm going to go ahead and cut through the core like I typically would do and start breaking off the florets but I'm just going to be careful as I get to that bad spot and make sure I get all of that out because it, it seems like it's kind of deep in there so now to address that I'll break it down even further There it is right there. Oh, is that one little piece? How funny. Now it's all fine. That's a little bit big piece of stem. So I'll cut that off. But you know, the stem is fine to eat as well. And it's a different type of fiber. If you read my series on insulin resistance, in one of those, um, one of those articles I talked about, you know, what my doctor recommended that I do. I had some blood work done, and it, it came back showing I was one point away from what they would consider insulin resistant. Now, this was when I had my blood work done, right after the holidays. You know, we were eating paleo treats, but paleo treats every single day. And my body is apparently very carb sensitive and didn't handle that very well. So, anyway, I was on this. Um, on the brink of insulin resistance and 
So he was talking to me about what to do about that. And one of the things he had me do was eat 25 types of vegetables, I think every three or four days. It wasn't every day and it wasn't every week. It was like every three or four days you should try to get three or four types, sorry, 25 types of vegetable or fiber. And he said, so for example, like cauliflower or broccoli, the floret is one type and the stem is actually a different type. So include some of the stems. Don't just cut the flowery part off. Whether you're steaming it, roasting it, whatever you're doing um, with these cruciferous vegetables, the floret and the stem are both important. So I'm simply going to cover this with water and then get it on my stove to boil. Does anybody else still have these little hot pads that you weave yourself? Some of the ones that I have are ones that I made when I was a child and some are ones that my children have made for me when they have been at their grandparents' house. I think that's really fun. And they work really well. They're a nice small size and I like that. So having the lid on has kept the steam in and has um, helped my meat to defrost so I can just about break through all of it. So at this point I'm going to leave my lid off because I don't want all that water in there. If there is a lot of liquid, it's not going to brown. And what I'm really going for is browning. And actually, I was able to get a really good picture of this to show you on the blog, um, on the recipe. It's hard to get an actual in-process, real-life picture of the food cooking because of the steam. It's constantly steaming up the lens. And I'm sure there's some photography trick for that. Um, but I am not making millions with my blog or my videos and so we cannot afford to buy some of this fancy equipment so we're just making do with regular old stuff like um like everybody else has so anywho when i try to take a picture with my regular old camera it steams up on me and so i sometimes have a hard time getting a good um, in process picture but the one with this recipe actually shows you really well what we're going for which is this great browning. And so there's a lot of liquid in there right now. And so I'm leaving the lid off and I want some of that to evaporate out. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna wait to do my green beans because they will take three minutes in the Instant Pot. All I'm gonna do is put in a piece of bacon and um, let that crisp up a little bit on the saute function. And then I'll add a little bit of water, put my green beans in. So it really won't take very long. So I'm going to wait until I'm at the simmering point on my stroganoff. And when I have my mashed potato cauliflower in the oven, um, if you watch that video or read the recipe, you'll see the way I really like to do it is I boil the vegetables, I mash them in my food processor, and then I pour them in a baking dish and bake them um, in the oven. And I just think it adds a nice texture. So, at this point, I'm going to get my sour cream ready for my um, stroganoff. You know, I'm going to read my ingredients or my instructions to see when I'm supposed to add the garlic because I do have a couple cloves of garlic that go in here. I should probably do it now. So, the recipe calls for one clove, but these are teeny little cloves, so I have two. So, I'm just going to mince these up as finely as I can with my knife and put them in. Because I have all that liquid in there, they're not gonna brown. You know, you don't want your garlic to burn, so you need to be careful when you add it. Sometimes you need to add it at the end. I heard an Italian chef one time say that you should always add garlic at the end of your cooking because it will um, destroy the flavor, essentially, if you cook it. Um, so, I, But I think that's just a matter of taste. I think garlic can be really pungent and overpowering. So to add it early on, as long as you're careful that it's not going to burn, because burned garlic is not a nice flavor, then it's okay to add it earlier on in your dish and it will um, give it time to mellow. I try not to just touch it too much because then, you know, you have garlic smell in your fingers. And I know the trick of running your hands on the, like a stainless steel sink or whatever, and I do that, but even still sometimes it takes a long time to get the garlic smell off. Okay, so that's just going. 
I don't want to turn it up too, too high because then I'll really start smoking and I don't want my smoke alarm to go off again. So that's going to work. So traditional beef stroganoff has sour cream that you add at the very end that kind of finishes the dish and it adds a nice tanginess. But with the paleo diet, we're not consuming dairy and so we have to come up with an alternative to that and a great alternative that, that works really well and tastes great is taking some coconut cream and mixing in some lemon juice. And when I say coconut cream, I mean I take my can of whole fat, full fat coconut milk and I simply scrape off the cream that has risen to the top. Now if you buy light coconut milk, it will not have this. So make sure you pay attention and buy the full fat. I like this Native Forest brand. This is their original and it has some guar gum in it. Um, they have one called Sim Simple or Simply and it does not have guar gum but it also tastes a little bit different. It doesn't seem to me like it ever has as much cream and the texture is a little bit different. So um, my doctor said that Xanthan gum is not good. Carrageenan is not good. We should try to avoid those. But a little guar gum is not the end of the world. So I'm going to go with that and I'm going to use the, the coconut milk that I like the best. And then I'm going to use the juice from half of this lemon. Unless it's not very juicy, in which case I will use the whole thing. So we'll just squeeze it in there. I don't really like the taste of coconut milk in a lot of things. In some dishes, the flavor comes out very strong. But in this one, there's enough flavor in the rest of the dish that the coconut, I don't even notice that it's coconut. Um, I did squeeze a couple seeds in there, so let me pick those out. And then I just mix this together, so I kind of smash it. And you know what? It doesn't even really matter if you mix it together because it's just going to melt down into your dish and it'll get mixed in in there. But somehow it makes me feel better to go ahead and mix it up a little bit. And you see, it's really, this is, this is thick. This is solid. You can buy something in a can or sometimes it comes in a little box called coconut concentrate or sometimes coconut cream concentrate. And that is different, different than this. There's also something called coconut manna, which is the whole coconut flesh that has been basically really pureed and cooked down. And that has uh, more of a sweetness to it. And for example, I use it in my, um, in my donut recipe. If you subscribe to my newsletter, I'll send you a uh, paleo donut recipe. And the maple glaze is maple syrup and some of that coconut manna melted down together. And that is really good. So when I say coconut cream, I am meaning the cream that has risen to the top of a can of full fat coconut milk. So I've got my eye on my cauliflower over there. I just want it to come to a boil. And then I will put the lid on and reduce the heat, but it hasn't boiled yet. So I'm going to get started on my green beans. And I'm going to add... I have forgotten this package of bacon. How can I forget bacon, right? In the back of my refrigerator. And so I want to make sure it was still good. You can certainly do these green beans in your, on your stove. But I've got my Instant Pot right here, so I'm just going to use that. I'm going to, because I have this out, I'm going to just go ahead and cook this bacon. And then we'll have it for breakfast tomorrow. And it is fine now, it has not gone bad, but it does not have a lot of life left. So I'm just going to go ahead and cook it. Because my oven is going to be on for my mashed cauliflower anyway, so that way I'm just heating up the kitchen at one time. I feel like no matter how simple I try to make things, my kitchen always becomes a three ring circus. You should see it on Thanksgiving. Wouldn't that be interesting to do a video of me fixing our Thanksgiving dinner. And I'll tell you what, I'm very planned and organized and it works really well. And I do most of my Thanksgiving cooking 
the day before so I can just relax and enjoy and watch the parade with my kids and everything is perfect it really works out so well um, if you want my Thanksgiving recipes which we do a completely gluten-free Thanksgiving for all of my family it's usually around 20 people and nobody complains everybody loves it um, most of what we serve is paleo but a few things do have some dairy in them um, those recipes are all in my ebook. I have a book called Your Paleo Holiday, and it's Your Paleo Holiday because I want you to make it yours. But I'm giving you a head start. I'm giving you some tips and some great recipes to start from um, that you certainly need to add in your own family's traditions. Um, but all of our traditional foods are in there: the turkey, the dressing, the gravy. Um, let's see what else: apple pie, pumpkin pie, the pie crust. Lots of great um, cranberry sauce, fresh cranberry sauce. All the great recipes you need for your Thanksgiving table are there. Okay, we're getting there. And the oven comes up to temperature, I'll put that in. And if you want that book, you can get it several ways. You can download it from my website, or you can just order it straight from Amazon or iTunes. It's in both places. Uh, all three places, I should say. Um, and I'd love for you to get it. Help support our little um, family blog here. Okay, so let me check on my bacon. I'm going to use this fork. I just wanted to add the flavor in there. So my recipe for uh, the stroganoff calls for one cup of chicken or beef broth. And I had, um, it was really a little bit less than a cup left in my container that I thawed out the other day. But it was so thick and good gelatin in there that I added a little bit of water and kind of rinsed it around. So I ended up with a little bit over a cup. I've got a cup and a quarter. But my husband is late getting home. This might thicken up a little too much for me. So I have this carton of beef broth that was in the fridge. So I might end up needing to add just a little bit of that. So I have it ready just in case I need it. My liquid is working this way out of here, so we're getting close to um, the browning stage. You see my green beans are a great big um, frozen blob. Um, the Instant Pot instructions say one to two minutes for cooking fresh green beans and two to three for cooking from frozen. So mine are frozen, so I'm going to do three minutes and I know it will be plenty because I've done it before for five and six and I have felt like they were overcooked. So I think starting from frozen and three minutes would probably be just right. I just want my bacon to actually get brown and crispy and it's almost there. Okay, we're starting to get some browning in the center of the skillet. I'm going to taste it for seasoning at this point. I need some salt, but I'm just going to add a little because my broth is seasoned. You can see, maybe you can see all the pepper. When you make broth and then you freeze it, the pepper will tend to settle at the bottom. So, you know, I try to kind of stir it up, end up with the, the last of the container typically has more pepper in it. So, and, and salt as well. Um, the salt will dissolve in better than the, than the pepper will. Um, so this has some seasoning and the aminos, of course, are also um, a little bit salty. I'm going to tell you how much sodium, 160 milligrams of sodium per teaspoon. So it's certainly not as high as something like soy sauce, but it does bring some uh, sodium to the table. So I want to withhold a little bit. So I had added an eighth of a teaspoon a couple times before. So even with this addition, I think I'm up to not even a half of a teaspoon of salt. So it's not going to be overly seasoned. Okay, we're getting some brownies in the thing there. All right, my bacon is cooked. I'm going to turn this off. 
I'm going to add the water and my green beans. Just fill my pot up about halfway. And I just want three minutes. Manual. So I need to go down. There we go. So that won't take very long at all. I'm ready over here to mash my cauliflower when it's done. So I've shown you in several recipes recently how we thicken with the glucomannan, that konjac root powder. It's really a fiber supplement, but it works great to thicken up your sauces without adding a lot of starch. So I just wanted to show you tonight that there are other ways. And I'm going to use arrowroot. You could use arrowroot or you could use cassava flour. Some people um, use tapioca flour a lot in paleo cooking, but also Quite a few people react to tapioca. So even though, gosh, I haven't looked at this in a long time, but I think this is right. Tapioca comes from the cassava plant as well. I'll have to check that, but I think that that's correct. But it, it's a different part of the plant, or there's something that's different in the processing. I can't remember, but I can handle cassava with no problem. But too much tapioca will upset my stomach. And you know, a lot of times, gluten-free products that you find at the store, like a gluten-free paleo cr uh, pizza crust, a lot of them are made with um, tapioca. So just be aware of that. If you, I mean, feel free to try tapioca, but know that um, a lot of people do react to it. So keep that in mind. Arrowroot, I, I've just found that it doesn't bother me or anybody else in my family. And it's really my key ingredient in baking. Almond flour plus some arrowroot makes a really nice texture in paleo baked goods. And um, it's calorie dense, you know, with a lot of starch in the arrowroot. There's a lot of fat and calories in the almond flour. So they are not low calorie treats, but they are um, not inflammatory and they are delicious. And so they make a really, um, a really good treat on occasion. So tempting to just stir and stir and stir and stir, but we've got to let it sit so that it will brown. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm doing, I'm stirring a little bit more than I normally would because this burner is small and it doesn't distribute the heat as well. And so it's browning right in the middle, but it's not browning on the edges. And you notice I did not add any fat <coughs> oven. I did not add any fat when I started with my ground beef. Grass-fed ground beef is um, almost always lower in fat. It's leaner than conventionally raised beef. And so typically I would need to add a little fat. But um, just my experience with this particular brand, I knew that it would, as I brown it, it would leave, uh, enough oil would come out that it would be the right amount to make my sauce, to get it thickened the way I want it. Because basically we're making a roux. We have some fat, we have a starch, and then we're going to add some liquid and we're making like a cream sauce without the cream. Does that make sense? Um, so I knew that I would get enough fat, even though it's pretty lean, um, but I didn't need to add any more. And it's, it's been just perfectly fine. Alright, I'm going to get my bacon in the oven. You know, something I've realized in doing this Whole30, which I know is one of the benefits of it, is um, it's made me realize the times in the day when I would snack or would want to snack or be tempted to snack. And this time of day when I'm cooking dinner and it's like 30 minutes from dinner or less and I'm hungry, that I would go and get a piece of chocolate or eat a few nuts or a couple slices of pepperoni something like that. If I'm hungry and I eat an apple, it just makes me hungrier, so I wouldn't tend to go for a fruit or a vegetable, which would of course be a wiser choice. But on the whole 30, I'm conscious of that, and I can't go have the piece of chocolate. I don't really want to eat an apple, because on an empty stomach, I know that's not going to be satisfying at all. I know that dinner is coming. I'm not going to starve in 30 minutes. 
Um, so it's just made, given me an awareness of some bad habits that have needed breaking. And I'm not by any means saying that eating a piece of chocolate a day is a bad thing. I don't think that's a bad thing at all, but it's not a habit that I want to get into either. Okay, so I have my video up above is working. You can see I've got a lot of good browning on the bottom of my skillet. I've got some browning there. So I'm going to add my arrowroot. And I'm going to stir this around. Just get it totally coating all the contents of my skillet. And we'll let this cook for a couple minutes. And then I'll add my liquids. So I'll need to add my broth and my coconut aminos. And then at the very end, I'll add my, my sour cream. I know that a lot of people have a hard time with coffee on the Whole30 because they typically put a lot of cream or milk in their coffee, and I have gotten in that bad habit as well. I didn't use a lot, but just a splash of cream and a couple drops of liquid stevia, and that was just the way I wanted my coffee. And I felt like it wasn't hurting me. I felt fine when I drank that. Um, but it's possible that it was causing some, some inflammation in my body, that cream. Um, so I'm, I'm okay to leave it out for 30 days and I can just drink it black. I know there are all sorts of different um, nut, nut milks and coconut milk and different things you can add to your coffee. But frankly, I just don't like that taste. Um, but it's, I'm, it's brown. It's cooked for a couple minutes. I'm going to add my broth. This will deglaze my pan, but I'll need to, I'll need to work it. Um, but I was wanting a little flavor in my coffee, and I'm not a Starbucks fan. I, I don't go and I don't get the flavored um, pumpkin spice latte. That's not my thing. But I have heard raves and raves about Trader Joe's pumpkin spice coffee. And it's just a pumpkin spice flavored coffee. It's not like a creamy thing. And so we went um, on Sunday, we, after church, we go to Aldi, which is our discount grocery store that I love. And it's just right by the church, so we just always go after church. And there's Trader Joe's right down the road, too. So I needed a couple things that they didn't have at Aldi. And when I was in there, um, you know, Trader Joe's is a crazy store. It, it drives me crazy. I can't find anything I want. Um, so I was having to walk all over the store to get the two things that I really wanted. And I spotted the pumpkin spice coffee, and it was just the K cups. It wasn't the like the canister of ground coffee. And it's like, oh, that would be great because it would give me some flavor, and there's no sugar in it or anything. It's just spices, cinnamon and nutmeg, and I can't remember what else. And so I looked and looked, and I couldn't find any of the canisters. And so I just kind of stood there and debated, well, do I get the K cups? Because I don't have one of those kind of coffee makers, but I really wanted it. So I bought the K-Cups. And so um, in the morning, I just have my regular, I have a blend of coffee that I really, really like. It's a light roast and I enjoy it black. Or I can enjoy it black. I like it with cream and some stevia, but I can enjoy it black. Um, but in the afternoon, that's when I kind of want my treat coffee. So I got to put in my coconut aminos, two teaspoons. I'm going to measure and be a good girl. Um, so I've been having my... Trader Joe's pumpkin spice coffee, and I just cut open the top on that little K cup and pour it into my coffee filter. And it's not quite enough to make my size cup, so I just need to add one scoop of my scoop of my other coffee. Um, but it's a strong enough flavor that it carries through, and it's just a nice little treat. So that's something to consider. Um, I haven't I haven't read a lot of forums and things regarding Whole 30. But whenever I have read about coffee, it's all been about um, a cream substitute and not, nobody suggested uh, buying a flavored coffee. But of course, you'll need to check and make sure that it's just the flavor and not anything, any sugar or dairy products added. Okay, so let me tell you one thing about this coconut milk. It will go bad really fast. So... I don't always do this because I'm just not always that on top of it, but I try to, when I plan a recipe using coconut milk, because I never ever use the whole pan. Well, that is not true. 
There's actually a recipe in my book in the fall section for a pumpkin spice, like a creamer. I'm not, I can't remember exactly what I called it, but it's, um, it's a flavoring to add to your coffee to make your own pumpkin spice latte. And I believe it does use an entire can of coconut milk because I reduce it down with a little maple syrup to make like a sweetened condensed milk, but it's coconut milk, so it's dairy free. But that's the only time I could think of that I ever use a whole can. So I just put it in a Ziploc bag and I stick it in the fridge and I try my best to make a point to use it within a week or it'll start to mold and mildew and that's disgusting. Okay, so hubby has called. He's on his way and this just needs to hold for a little bit till he's closer. I'm going to give it a taste for seasoning. It's so good. Mm -hmm. I love it. It's so comforting. Even though it was 90 degrees today, it was so blasted hot. I think Friday is finally supposed to cool off. And I am so ready. It is fall. I'm ready for fall. So I added a little bit of my beef broth because it's going to keep simmering. And it's going to get too thick. So I wanted to thin it out just a little bit. So I went ahead and added the beef broth so that can cook and the flavors can kind of blend together. And then I'll add my coconut cream. It's a teeny bit salty for my taste right now. But this is not salty at all. It's just the coconut and the lemon. So that will mellow it out and it will be perfect. So if you taste it at this stage, do not be worried if it's just a teeny bit too salty. So I'm going to clean up a little bit and I will see you back in a few minutes. Okay, now I want to stop. Oh, I want to stop my green beans from cooking or they will get overcooked. So I'm going to do the quick release. So people keep leaving me comments to put a towel over this, but I have not found that it works very well. It's very easy to burn yourself. I still think it's better to just carefully knock it. And then maybe you can divert it a little bit like that, but I mean, steam can burn you very badly. So that is, that is a dangerous thing to play around with. That's a lot of steam. That's a lot of steam shown you this before but I have the space now so I will um, I'll show you my cauliflower actually let me move this guy this burner is already hot so I'm just going to borrow this burner for a second and let that cauliflower cook let some of that water cook off and I showed you this in the in the cauliflower video so Just strain that a little bit. You know what I just realized? I did not add any seasoning to my green beans. They are going to be so, so bland. I'm going to put in a lot of pepper. Because fresh out of the garden green beans have no seasoning, obviously. I think those are cooked really well. Pull out a couple and give them a taste when they cool a little bit. Okay. All right, so I put my water out of there. So I'll put you back on there. turned the burner up to, um, to really cook the water off the cauliflower. So it was hot. But I've turned it back down. So it was way. Okay. All right. That is really full. No problem. Again, there, there's no seasoning on there. So I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of beef. whole bunch of pepper. Oh, my 
bacon just got finished. All right, it's times like this when I really like my pre-ground pepper, a little container. Sometimes I feel like this can take forever to get enough pepper. But it's what I got this time. All right, so. All right, that's a half a teaspoon of salt. And that little bit of ghee, and I'm going to process. I don't want to add any more ghee because it has a strong flavor that my children do not like. And they will eat this mashed cauliflower. I want them to eat it. So I'm not going to add any more. But I am going to add more salt and pepper. It definitely needs more salt and pepper. And you know, I just made this bacon. So I've got my bacon drippings in the pan right there. And I'm going to pour some of that in. And I'm also going to drizzle a little bit on top in the dish, and it is going to be so good. <clears throat> so I'm just going to pour a teaspoon in. And then in my cauliflower recipe, in that video, you saw me dot a little bit of grass-fed butter on top and then put it in the oven. So I'm just going to drizzle a little bit of the bacon drippings on top and put that in the oven. Sure it still tastes good. We got enough salt and pepper in there. This is too low. I want it to be simmering. It's not simmering. Perfect. It would be perfecter with perfecter, like that word. It would be perfecter with a little bit of butter and cream and cream cheese. But we're not having that and we're not going to complain about it. No, nope, we're not. Because we're doing great on our whole 30. So no complaining. We do not have to have dairy. Not everybody in the world has dairy. Very creamy. little sprinkle of fresh ground pepper on the top. Okay, in the oven we go. All right, now I gotta taste the green beans. Okay, as I dish those up, they will get mixed in. I'm just not going to mess with them now because I don't want to break them apart and mush them up. Okay, we are almost ready to eat, so I'm going to add in my coconut cream lemon juice combination here. That is my sour cream substitute. We'll just stir that in. Make our stroganoff look creamy. It will taste creamy. 
it will certainly add a richness because that coconut cream is fat, fat. But that is why we can do this whole 30 because it is sustaining. This food sustains us. It tastes good and it won't leave you hungry 30 minutes later wanting a snack. Um, you might want a snack, but you certainly don't need a snack. And if your stomach isn't kind of gnawing at you, you're going to be less likely to think about wanting a snack or a treat because you're full, you're satisfied. That's the word, that's the buzzword that I keep reading everywhere is satiety. Are you satiated? Does your meal leave you satiated? Are you satisfied, basically? And so that's been my goal with these Whole30 meals is to make really satisfying meals that are going to taste good. And so I'm not going to feel like I'm missing out. It's browned a little bit more in the middle. So I've added some additional liquid, which has helped release that. So I'm getting that um, brown stuff up off of the bottom of the skillet. And it tastes good. So while I make these videos, my kids are upstairs. And they're very quiet, which is really good. That's awesome. That's what they should be doing. But it worries me just a little bit. You ain't getting that that's founded. Um, I think it is. They're good kids. And they actually have started cleaning up the kitchen for me after lunch. So that um, it's nice and clean for when I start my videos. So my husband was right today. And my kids are helpful. So what more could a mom ask for? I feel like I say it all the time, but that's really good. Every time I make this, I'm kind of surprised at how yummy it is. That coconut cream, the lemon, it just like, oof, it elevates it. It's so good. This, let's see, the citrus chicken thighs and the jambalaya have been the best. I think the jambalaya was the best meal. We all loved it. It was so, so good. The turkey meatballs last night were also delicious. Um, They've all been good, but um, some, of course, better than others, and this is one of my favorites. So I'll show you the whole thing when um, the cauliflower is finished. Okie dokie. As you can see, I turned my um, Instant Pot back on because my husband, who was right about something today, was later getting home, so my green beans were getting cold. But that was fine. I took the lid off because I didn't want them to continue to steam. I didn't want them to continue to cook. But they were getting cold, so I turned it on to saute less. The um, I could adjust my saute function less normal and more, so I just adjusted it to less. And it has just been on for a couple minutes. But you can see it's working. There's a lot of steam coming out. So I know my green beans are hot. I'm going to grab my cauliflower cauliflower potatoes. Got a nice little crust on top. Drizzled that bacon drippings on top. And my beef stroganoff. Let me grab these guys out. Okay, so I simply, I like around the edge where it got a little bit crispy. That's what I want. So I'll grab some of my cauliflower. Make a little bed for my stroganoff right down in the center there. And of course, we need more than that, so we've got to spill over the edges. And then I use my tongs to fetch out my green beans so I can be gentle with them. And there we have Whole30. Day 18, uh, beef stroganoff with mashed cauliflower and green beans. And this is a really good one. If you haven't made any of the others, make this one. And I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. I have a really special recipe for tomorrow. I think you're going to love it. So best of luck. I hope it's going well. And I'll see you tomorrow.